Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? We're here at GM's Milford Proving Grounds, and right behind me is the Corvette E-Ray. We're gonna give you guys a full in-depth uh, review of this car, talk about all the details, the overview of the car, everything. So let's get right into it. And I have the pleasure of introducing you guys to the president of General Motors, Mark Royce. So Mark, please. Thank you. Great to see you, Abdullah. Same here. Nice to see you. Thanks yeah. for, thanks thanks for, for being here. here. Yeah. No, I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. So if you can give me a kind of a quick overview of like the inspiration behind electrifying the Corvette, because it's the first time. There's a lot of firsts here. There's a lot kind of, of firsts here. Tell me a little yeah. bit about that. Well, I mean, it's really neat because um, uh, January 17th, you know, was the first time the, the, the Corvette was actually shown in concept form mm -hmm. at the Waldorf. And so, you know, and now 70 years later, we're doing an electrified yeah. version of it, which is groundbreaking, as you said, it's, it's a first. But, you know, I think uh, Taj and the whole, um, you know, uh, C8 team that architected the car uh, mm -hmm. a few years ago, um, really looked at you know what 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 is the performance that we start with and then you know the versions of that um, have to be thought about before we uh, we finish the architecture and you'll see um, the tunnel is filled with um, you know electrification yeah. and then you know we've got some great things um, on the 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 EO will drive piece of it mm -hmm. on the front axle um, it's 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 really a, a packaging uh, masterpiece you can see it on the cutaway but. You know, we're getting on off the LT2. We're still at you know 495 um, horsepower mm -hmm. off the rear uh, rear of it, and then uh, 160 um, at the at the front for you know 655, which is is really good. Yeah. Um, but you can get it all to the ground, and that's what this is all about, and that's what C8 um, ha has really taken advantage of as an architecture. So there's a lot of firsts here. Um, it's not a plug-in, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. So this is a performance-based hybrid that uh, it's just a, an unbelievable car to drive in any condition. Yeah, because you have that versatility of all-wheel drive now. You do, yeah, is, you do. It's huge. You get a lot of extra yeah, you do. ability. You it, yeah, you see it in the teaser, um, and you see it um, in, in some of the video where... Picking up some snow. Yeah, it's picking up some snow, <laughs> and it's really, really uh, pretty pretty awesome, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. What's, like, your favorite part about this car? So, like, one thing, if you would be like, I love the fact that this E-Ray e has this, what yeah. would it be? I think the team that did um, some of the graphics that show um, how what's really happening in the car mm -hmm. did an unbelievable job because you can really um, drive the car and see uh, what's happening and, mm -hmm. and you can also uh, learn how to drive you know a mid-engine car that's now e-all will drive and you know that front axle actually pulls you uh, up and over some of the off camber things and, and mm -hmm. it's an amazing experience to drive as good as the c8 um, you know is as a mid-engine car yeah this takes it another step further uh, when you start po uh, delivering that power so there's not I guess there's not one thing, but it's sort of mm -hmm. everything on the car, and it's so well integrated um, by our team. It's just, uh, it's really a masterpiece. That's also the culmination of that yeah, electrification, what I it brings so. to the entire vehicle I dynamics. Think so. yeah, I, I, think I respect so. that. Yeah. And then carbon ceramic brakes are standard. I saw that, and yeah. I was really, really shocked by that. That's right. huge. Right, we get the, the, the wide body bot, you know, piece of this from a design and styling standpoint, mm -hmm. which I think is, uh, you know, is absolutely beautiful. Uh, first introduced on the Z06, but then, you know, you get a different wheel here. You, you, yeah, you get the, the carbon um, the carbon ceramic brake package, which, um, you know, the car is fast, so it needs, you know, the stopping power and everything else. So it, yeah. it has it. Uh, but it's just a, you know, it's a it's a very sophisticated car. And I think, uh, you know, the colors that we're offering on it are, are very sophisticated as well. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, people will be just um, amazed at, at, at how this uh, how this car takes, it just takes it to a whole new level. So For sure. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Well, awesome. Well. Thank you very much. I yeah, really appreciate thank it. You. Sharing yeah, your thoughts. Thank you. And, Thanks for uh, being here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We're actually going to hand it off to Mike Kucher, who is the lead development engineer of the E-Ray, and he's going to give us a real technical, in-depth look at this vehicle. So, Michael, cool. Michael really get into the integration. Yeah. Mike's one of the best. Well, he, he integrated the car, so that's who did it. That's so, awesome. Okay, Yeah, cool. I should ask him those questions. So. So, <laughs> Thanks, Mike, Hi, for being here. No, I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, he's the lead development engineer of the Corvette E-Ray. And I was wondering actually if we can first start off with the, the V8, because this, this is a V8 with a hybrid setup. It's a very unique setup. So can you talk us through starting kind of with the engine and the power the powertrain? Sure. All right, yeah, I'd like to walk you, walk you through, through this from the uh, rear to the front. So we have our very capable 6.2 liter uh, V8 naturally aspirated engine, coupled with our eight speed uh, dual clutch transmission. So we take that magnificent a stingray power plant, and we add to that the electrification piece. So down the center tunnel of the vehicle, we have our battery pack, and that provides the power to the front drive unit up front. Mm -hmm. uh, this 
adds a 160 horsepower, 125 foot-pounds of torque to the capable uh, engine of 495 horsepower, 470 uh, foot-pounds of torque for a total system power of 655 horsepower. Well, that's like that's like close to CO6 level. That, that was 670, I believe. You guys are getting there, and right. like it just I can't believe like it was. I mean, not as simple as like adding an electric motor, but that really brought the power level to like we're talking like beyond like exotic like supercar levels. It was already there, and this is kind of like taking it to that next level. What, what, what really makes this car exciting it is, is when you get into the vehicle, the electrification adds that, uh, the, the, the performance and mm -hmm. the feeling of instant torque. So we spent a lot of time in the propulsion integration space. When you tip into that accelerator pedal, the car one, you, you can see it perch and, and you mm -hmm. can really feel it pull immediately. And that's how we achieve the performance numbers of 2.5 se seconds, zero to 60 time, mm -hmm. a quarter mile time of 10 and a half seconds, and uh, ex exceptional passing speeds too, when you're, you're trying to do a passing maneuver on a highway and you just tip in, it, you just get around the car right in front of you instantly. Yeah, and then suspension was, because that power has to go down to the ground, um, what was done in suspension to accommodate for the extra power? So with the, um, uh, one of the most challenging areas of this car is the, uh, uh, the controls integration. Mm. So you're taking the more capable propulsion system, adding it to the chassis controls in order to take that power and torque and put it to the ground. Mm -hmm. So that, that was probably one of the most challenging areas. So what we do there is um, uh, we have sensing systems that knows what the, uh, you know, what's the, what's the surface that the mm. tires are seeing. The tires understand what their capability is to provide torque uh, out, of, out of the rear axle or the front axle. And then the total combined control systems brings that all together to give you that instantaneous um, all-wheel drive capability for mm -hmm. any climate, any uh, terrain that you're going over, yeah. and it's all integrated. No, that's a good point. It's more than just like you're controlling just a throttle valve. You're not controlling a throttle valve and the, the load or the demand from the electric motor to give you a balance feel front rear as far as power delivery goes that's right and I, I, I hadn't thought about it initially until you brought that up but and then this does carry over from like it has a bo wider body from the z06 right correct yep. so it's 3.6 inches wider um was there anything unique to the, like the, the tires compared to either stingray or z06 the um uh the the car comes standard with a uh, performance uh, all season tire Okay. Um, which gives it its four season capability. Mm -hmm. So um, that is, u that is uh, unique to this, um, to this model. Gotcha. Cool. And then they, uh, we mentioned the carbon ceramic brakes. Standard. And then these are the new wheels. Is it like a unique? Unique five spoke uh, wheel design. Uh, it's, it looks, <laughs> looks awesome. It does look really <laughs> good. Um, and then the, uh, as far as uh, cooling goes, because it does have the larger uh, opening that carries over from that Z06. Um, was there any additional cooling because of the, either the electrical components or? Sure, uh, th thermal management is always a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, everyday driving, maybe not so much, but mm -hmm. as you push, push the vehicle for maximum performance or even up to track performance, uh, thermal management's a big deal. So um, obviously we have the, the um, uh, cooling uh, engine transmission capability mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, in the rear and front of the vehicle. For the battery pack, we also have the liquid cool the cells. Okay. We, uh, the um, uh, coolant will uh, come in through the cells, cool each of the cells, um, and that runs a, a separate cooling loop. Um, up front, we have a, um, 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 a power electronics cooling loop that, ki that cools the, um, uh, the electronics within the battery pack. And then finally, we have a uh, cooling loop for the uh, front drive unit. So okay. three additional loops to keep wow. everything optimum for, again, for performance. Yeah, and I was thinking about packaging because when I saw the little window for all the battery packs, I was like, oh, they, they had planned. They, it seems so, such a convenient spot to put it, like they had planned it to be there. But like packaging that would probably was still, there was probably some still ta challenges there because there, there had to have been something there, yeah. right? Yeah, every, every kilogram or pound that goes in this car has to earn its way in. Mm -hmm. So the natural, structure spine of that tunnel is always it's always been there with Corvettes where traditionally we would run a prop shaft through there yeah. but that also offers great stiffness 
So with this, in this situation, we had to start with how, does, how much ener energy and power can we pack within the battery pack mm -hmm. in the confines of that center uh, tunnel area, as well as a simple system where all the, the cells, power electronics are all uh, contained within the battery pack. Mm -hmm. So if you look at that uh, battery pack outside of the vehicle, it, it's, it sits on a plate um, and it will just load bottom up. Um, and there's simple um, three phase cables that come from the front of the battery pack right to the drive unit. Mm -hmm. And they're only about a foot long. Oh, okay. So it's a real simple package, yeah. uh, nice and clean. Um, it, you know, that, that's, that's how it all ties together. It works, yeah. Yep. No, 100%. And then, like, the, like, spring rates, because it has, a, has the Magna Ride from the, the Corvette. Yep. That's 4.0, I believe. Um, are the springs different compared yeah. to a Stingray or Z06? Uh, the, 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 we, we add mass, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, again, every, every pound had to earn its way in, and we have, <laughs> then we have to accommodate that mass. For sure. So we did that. We have a, um, um, this, this vehicle is what we call our FE, FE5 suspension. Okay. Um, so it sits... Um, um, right in between the Stingray suspensions and our Z06, FE6, FE7 suspensions. So the mm -hmm. FE5 suspension, unique to this car, uh, has a little heavier springs, uh, pr um, primarily in the front, um, where we do accommodate that extra mass. Mm -hmm. um, and then, we, of course, we get mag uh, uh, MR tuning, uh, unique for this uh, model as well. Okay, cool. And then I noticed they're well, kind of playing with it. Um, the, the stealth mode ah. and then the shuttle mode. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, the, 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 we, when you do an electric vehicle or electrified vehicle, mm -hmm. you, gotta, you, gotta, gotta show, you know, gotta show it off a little bit. So, yeah. so one of the big, uh, the, the, the two electric modes, um, primary one we think that is gonna be used most is gonna be this, what we call the stealth mode. We call it neighborhood exit, okay? <laughs> so you can imagine um, when you um, uh, get in the vehicle, you can choose between these two modes. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty simple. Um, I'll show you a, a little bit later. It's a, we call it the secret handshake. You can you, uh, uh, select one of the two modes. Mm -hmm. The neighborhood exit mode basically is I want to get out of my neighborhood without waking up my neighbors. Yeah, that's most so, people. It's courteous of them if you have a loud car like this. Right, right. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I do that daily. Everybody on my team knows that. We, we, I do that daily. I'll park outside. Mm -hmm. I start my engine. My neighbor's window's right, right above it. And um, the stealth neighborhood exit is going to be awesome for that, where I can basically get out of my subdivision to the primary road. Yeah. I can then uh, select uh, my appropriate mode mm -hmm. and then uh, carry on my route. That's awesome. It, you're like, it's, it's leveraging the electrification, but there's a practical aspect of it, of like actually like not upsetting people and bothering people, which yeah. is cool. And right. it'll probably sound cool because it's electrified motors. You hear the whirring, I'm, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah, awesome. it, it's, it's, um, we try to, we, um, the electric, uh, electrification system, or electric motor, will, um, um, it makes, it makes unique noises, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, we do tune, uh, some, some of that to make it, uh, more pleasant to, to, uh, to the, mm -hmm. uh, driver, and, uh, we think it gives a little bit of a, um, a more menacing, a stealthy, um, a, you know, yeah. a character of the car. For sure. Yeah. And then the shuttle mode, how is that distinct from the, the stealth motor? What does the shuttle mode provide? Yeah. Um, sh shuttle mode is uh, not for public roads. Um, okay. we, th we think of it here in the uh, colder weather states. Uh, we think of it as, hey, I don't want to start my engine, get all the you know, uh, uh, heat into the engine and so on. So uh, mm -hmm. it's not for public roads. It's very low speed, 15 miles an hour. Um, you can move it around your garage if you're cleaning out your garage in the wintertime. Um, if you're if you're in a, a race paddock situation, you can uh, you don't want to start your engine. You can go from point A to point B. Okay. Um, so so shuttle um, uh, has it, and, and the engine will never come on in shuttle mode at all. At all, okay. Whereas in stealth mode, going back to that, which is is a little bit more capable uh, electric mode, um, that the engine does what we call a flying start. So as you're driving the vehicle and you approach the limits of the electric capability. Mm -hmm. The engine will automatically start. You'll, um, you'll, you'll see the, uh, the driver has special gauges and displays that um, tells them how close they're getting to uh, the engine starting. Okay. And then um, once the uh, engine does need to start to supplement the electric uh, capability, the engine roars to life. There's a, uh, a nice transition on the uh, display. Mm -hmm. Gives you your, your familiar tack and speedometer, and then you have 
full system power of, of both engine and uh, front and drive. And then are there speed limits for if you're in shuttle mode versus in stealth? Sure. Or uh, on stealth, pure electricity, I guess? Yeah, five mile an hour speed limit um, okay. is, is uh, oh. max capability. Mm -hmm. uh, we, it's, the, um, it's also limited based on how uh, aggressive you tip into the accelerator pedal. Okay. Um, so it's, and then shuttle mode, uh, max speed on that is 15 miles an 15? hour. 15? Yeah. Okay, which makes sense for if you just need to move it around, you don't want right. to turn the engine. 15 is more than enough to get you there. Right. Oh, that's cool. Are there any other, anything we, we missed as far as like cool, tech, unique technical aspects of the E-Ray compared to the Stingray or, or Z06? The thing that's really cool about this battery, this is not just taking a battery like out of any other EV and putting it in a small package in the Corvette. This is a completely different kind of battery. It's totally power focused, not energy focused. Mm. And we brought the idea of electrifying a Corvette to our battery folks. They were so excited because we were asking to take all the battery chemical processes and use them in a completely different way. Mm. Typically you're thinking about how can I cram as much energy into a battery pack because everybody's worried about range. Mm -hmm. For us, it's how fast can you get energy in and how fast can you get energy out. Yeah. And we want that in a compact space. So mm -hmm. ours is more of a power chemistry rather than an energy storage. Right. So gotcha. you look at the battery from a distance, oh, you just took a bunch of pouch cells. And looks yeah. Like, so if you want to talk yeah. about that, you can. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thank you for chiming in. No one, one item I could also highlight while we're, while we're driving is the, mm -hmm. um, uh, the center stack has uh, what we call our E-Ray Performance app, oh, okay. which has yeah, yeah. A unique uh, displays that engages the, the driver in understanding how the vehicle is operating. It, it, it will give you power or torque values for what the engine is doing, mm -hmm. what the front drive unit is doing, and then um, it will let you know, um, you know, if you're, you know, um, uh, performance of the uh, numbers, to, you know, total horsepower numbers, torque numbers, um, so that's engaging for the driver to understand how the battery is being used. But you'll see that this battery is always being used for optimum, whether it's performance, whether it's for chassis controls, mm -hmm. it's always being used. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Yes. Really appreciate it. I guess uh, now it's time to, time to drive it, right? Let's do All it. Right, let's do it. So we're now going to be getting a ride along with Bill Wise, who's the chassis control engineer on this vehicle. So. Yeah, let's. You ready to go? Let's try it out. Okay. Toss it into stealth. Cool. Give it a go. Nice little quiet, silent uh, drive off here. Yeah. I think it powers up. Okay, so you have the unique center screen. Yeah. And we'll flip that back, and you can see the power flow on this gauge. Mm hmm. This front axle, so we can see we're using front axle only. Orange is, uh, we're using. Um, Propulsion. Mm -hmm. This is the engine. Obviously, it's off right now. Yeah. Um, but if I go to the brake, you can see it'll switch to green. Shows cool. that we see torque. Yeah, and we're seeing regen on the front axle. So you can drive this car. We've got several um, thresholds that'll get you out of this. Um, there's a speed limitation. There's a throttle pedal uh, percentage. There's uh -huh. an Excel request, and then a couple of switches if you do any of the HVAC stuff because okay. you're trying to get some heat. Yeah. Or uh, we'll do a flying start here, and you'll get to see this thing fired itself up um, but if we switch it into a, a vehicle mode oh the drive mode will run. yeah as it fires that up it's got to synchronize the rear axle to the front axle and then uh -huh. pretty seamless cool display right there so yeah we'll, uh, throw this in the track mode throw this over the PTM we'll do a couple launches hey, these animations are actually really sick yeah, they're really I wasn't cool. expecting that hopefully you don't get car sick no, no, I'm good. Great. I'll let you know if anything. If I'm I a terrible passenger. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. All right. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Oh, my. <laughs> wow. And that whirring was like the motor. Yeah. Wow. That was awesome. And I mean, it's like a not event. I mean, they could do that launch all day with one hand on the wheel. It's, it's straight as an arrow and it's incredibly fast. Yeah. You definitely felt that like instant pull of the motor just kind of getting you out of the out of the hole there. And, and there's no drama. I mean, you don't get any, with the big tires from the Z06 on this. Yeah. You get no slip from the rear axle and the front axle just digs. So, mm -hmm. ready to do another one? I'm down on another one, yeah. This is... <laughs> Wow, 
that and that noise is really cool. Like, yeah, honestly, it, is, yeah. it, it adds know, it adds to it. You know that you the hear the engine, doing but something like, different. It's like it's the fact that the engine is like it's going through the gears. You hear it revving, but then the motor's still like the wind's like going higher and higher and higher. That combination is really interesting. So we'll just loop around to the, to the start of this cone course. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see right now, we're a constant pedal, but we're not accelerating. So we're actually charging slightly and trying to get a little bit of battery back. Oh, nice. So we do play a lot of games, and you can see this is kind of like a gas gauge, but for the juice, for electricity. Okay. Electric, okay. So yeah, you can see we're charging, and if I break, we'll get more charge, and we'll start filling this gauge slowly, slowly. But oh, and it charges pretty fast. It was, that it was charges up. really fast, yeah. Wow. It's a small battery, but it takes lots of juice quickly, and, and it can deplete quickly. Yeah, that's exactly what, what Mike was saying. It's, it's designed for that. That's really cool to actually see it that quickly. Okay, you ready to fire this thing off? I'm ready, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, it's a little hard for you to feel, but I can actually feel the, feel the front axle correcting some of these slides. Yeah. We play some games with the vehicle balance to really utilize the front axle to keep the, the yaw exactly where we want it. Uh-huh. Oh my god. A little chicane, look at that. <laughs> Ceramics are just. Oh my god! <laughs> it's cool you can just power oversteer, like you're literally because yeah. you have more power in the back. Yeah, and a lot of times with all-wheel drive, you get the the front axle saturation, but because the two are decoupled, yeah, we have independence to do what we want. That so is awesome. We have the flexibility here. And I felt like you just had really. I mean, obviously you're like really used as you've been developing and yeah. working on and stuff, but like. You've, you really had like really good control over just controlling the, the yaw and... The car's incredibly ap approachable. Um, you can get away with a lot of things on this car. Yeah. That you might not with others. It, it's got such a wide peak. So. For sure. And I feel like, I remember that from like, just like the Stingray. It was a, it's a mid-engine car, which I was one of the first mid-engine cars I drove. And it was really easy to get into. Yeah. Great. So. You ready to have some fun? Yeah. Oh yeah. I could do this all day, dude. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Once you get it going, it'll just sit here. Yeah. It's awesome. Dude, the angle you're carrying. What was that? Oh, that's 60 miles an hour. Oh, oh. We lost the GoPros. It's all good. At least it fell off at the end. Yeah. Thank you. That was really cool. This gauge, I want to give it a close up of this gauge real quick. Just showing that in action. That was really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, no problem. Really appreciate it. Yeah, of course.